Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today at last we have a review of the Seiko BFK SKA371, otherwise known as the Big Fricking Kinetic. Now, as the name suggests, this is a kinetic watch, so it has a capacitor, it has the, it gets its power not only from uh, the rotor in the back to charge the capacitor, but also it has induction charging. Now, I've heard a few people say you can place these on things like two plus chargers and that and will charge. I placed it on a Philips two plus charger, it didn't charge. I placed it also on a phone charger, it didn't charge. But besides the point, I think Seiko do a proprietary one, but it is expensive. Now, this is basically Seiko's answer to the G-Shock. This is one seriously tough watch. Um, ever since I've had the watch, I've been trying to find out more about it, everything I can, and I've heard of people freezing these. I mean block of ice, proper freeze them, and then drop them on the ground. I've heard of people putting them then in boiling water, running them over with a car, put them in even a dishwasher to actually clean them. And it survives. And not only does it survive, but turns out the accuracy of this watch I can't say because I've only had it for a couple of weeks. Um, we're talking less than five seconds a year. That puts it in uh, high accuracy quartz. Now, you know, I, I can't say that for myself, but it is one seriously kind of substantial feeling watch. So who knows? Anyway, first things first, let's talk about sizes here. We've got a 42 millimeter case. We have 14.6 millimeters thick and a 50 mil lug to lug width. And the bracelet is only 20 mil, but obviously it flares out here, so it actually looks bigger than what it is, but in here is only 20. I think out here is more like 24 plus, I'm not sure. So yeah, it, it's got it's got a bit of weight to it. It really does feel like a solid watch. Let's have a look at that dial, see what we've got in there. Now, as you can see, we've got um, the inner track there is slightly lower than the outer minute track where you've got the luminous markers. The loom on this watch is good, but I wouldn't say it's quite as good as the kind of same era um, monster. The, I don't know, it's, it's good, it is strong, but the, it doesn't seem to last quite as long as the monster one did. So, you know, one of those things, it's, this watch I think came out in the early 2010-ish, somewhere around there. Now, it's not a bad looking dial actually. You do have this, I say, the minute track in the chapter ring, which comes around, does have this kind of 45 degree angle going up to it, and it gives it a bit of depth. I like the way they've actually cut out the markers, cut out the chapter ring around the, the hour markers. I think it looks quite good. The hands, I've heard some people say, um, Interesting thing, what they think the hands look like, but you know, that's for uh, you to decide. Now, I do like the fact that it actually looks like the second hand hits the, hits the uh, minute mark reasonably well. I find nothing worse when you do have a quartz watch and it doesn't actually strike the minute track. It's halfway or sink, and it's just one of those things which does drive me mad. But what can you do? The actual dial you can not only does it tower time but it also gives you the ability to check the charge of the capacitor now it does this by use of this button here at the two o'clock position now what they recommend you do is wait until the uh, seconds get round to the uh, 12 o'clock position and we'll have to wait for that. And then what you do is press this. Now, depending on how far it goes round, if it goes round here, I believe it's about one day, a week, and then I think it's about a month, and then all the way around here is anywhere up to six months. So let's see what we've got now. Here we go. There we go. So at the moment, this has up to a possible six months of charge left in it. What will happen is once the internal seconds realize it gets round to there, it will then actually carry on ticking. Now, it's quite a nice system because instead of having another item on the dial with a power reserve, you just press that and it's actually quite a nice way of doing it. Also, one thing I do like is the date window at three o'clock, it has got a black background and I do prefer just the day 
uh, the date versus say a day date on a monster. So for me, I tend to know what day it is. The date, not always. So as you can see, we do have a 200 meter dive rating on this. The, as we come out here, we have a um, hard looks crystal, which I'm surprised. I thought on this watch, I would have put a sapphire. The insert on the bezel, I believe it is just aluminium. It's picked up a few, a few scars on the way. The bezel itself, now when I first got this watch, this was incredibly tight. I mean really tight. So what I did, I just simply put a drop of oil, um, a very thin uh, chain oil and um, for a road bike, one drop. And now it is so nice and easy to turn. The actual bezel action, it's a 120 click and it's actually not bad. A little bit back play, but it is actually really nice. And also when you've got this big um, bezel here, the purchase on it is no problem at all. And it's and what's weird, it lines up all spot on. I honestly believe that it's only the last five years or so, or seven years, that Seiko have been messing up their alignments of their bezel and chapter rings. I really, I don't know if they've gone downhill or something, but the older Seikos seem to line up. Who knows? Now, as we come across here, we've got, okay, it's just nice. Yeah, kind of a brushwork and air, nothing fancy at all. There is a lot going on on this. You do have the buttons and a bit of polish in there. I'm not over keen on the case design. And one thing I would like to point out that if you do like to change the straps or bracelets on a watch and you have, let's say, a Bergeon tool, because of these bolts or whatever it looks like, they actually have no function at all. They're just completely hollow. You can't get you can't actually take the uh, press the spring down uh, spring bar down far enough so even this one won't do it you need to change the bracelet over a proper you know a full length one like this to be able to do it um because i did find it looks really good on this strap here the actual bracelet looks okay but i do think on the later seiko um, rubber straps it does look really good the bracelet itself nice and thick and chunky pin and collar Clasp is your typical Seiko clasp, uh, clasp from that period. Folded steel in the center, not necessarily my favorite. We do have the dive link extension there. Pull this down, he says, and then release. Let me just release that, and there you go. And then hook it back over and press down. The back of the watch is your typical Seiko screw down crown. I don't know if we can quite focus on that. There we go. Uh, screw, screw down and case back. I say this is a 200 meter diver, so that is what you expect. Now, let me actually show you it on my wrist so you get an idea how it looks. Uh, quick wrist check, I'm wearing a Larco Memmingen today. I'll just take this off. I say both are 42 mil, but this one just looks so much bigger because it's all dialed. Now, my wrist size, fraction over seven inches, and there you go. It's it's chunky, there's no argument it's chunky, but it's not too bad. So I don't know, I personally wouldn't get one myself, even though I don't mind it. The, the only reason being is it's kinetic, and that means if you don't wear it all the time, you know, if you don't give it enough wrist time, you will always be depleting the capacitor and the capacitor will not want to charge up as much as it did the time before. So horses for courses really. As a one watch guy, this would be spot on. If you're, yeah, if you're in a, say you're in a trade where you, you know, you, you're a builder or something and you might be bashing your watch or a mechanic or whatever, this wouldn't be a problem. You can bash this all you want and this will, yeah. You know, if you get run over by a car, you might not survive, but I've got a thing your watch would. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the review and I will see you at the next one. Stay safe out there. Okay, all the best. Bye.